following is a public service announcement to Halo fans across the globe. This message is sponsored by the Coalition of Breadwinners. Join us on Discord linked below. Alright y'all, today's video is going to be one of those hard hitters. I'm the home slice Ascent Hyperion, and today I'm going to be dishing out a reality check. With Halo Infinite nudging closer and closer to release, and 343 increasing the amount of news we get about the game, we're reaching a really critical tipping point as fans. Halo Infinite's marketing campaign has been notably sparse, with very little solid information about the game being circulated to actual sources. But as of late, there has been one growing sentiment amongst fans that has stemmed from the tone that 343 has set in their recent dev blogs. This is the growing idea that Halo Infinite will finally be the remedy to the 20 years of dispute the Halo community has been at. And while 343 of course hasn't said anything like that in plain text, they have not been shy about expressing that they feel they're really finding true and palpable middle ground in Halo Infinite, and that they're confident this game will give many fans a little piece of everything they love. Now, this sentiment has been further adopted by the community in a much wider meaning. People are beginning to believe, either internally or out loud, that Halo Infinite will in fact be the Great Unifier. Well, I'm sorry to say this, but no, it won't. In fact, the idea that everyone will like Halo Infinite is absurd, and I think the longer we allow ourselves to believe that Infinite will be the Great Unifier, the more we're just setting ourselves up for failure. Now, y'all know me, I wouldn't make a statement like that to purposefully be negative or to try to tear down the franchise, so why would I confidently assert something so seemingly downbeat? Well, in reality, I'm just trying to splash some cold water on my fellow fans, so we can walk into Halo Infinite sober on reality, not drunk on our own wild ideas. So let's start breaking down why Halo Infinite won't please everyone. So the primary premise is simple. You can never please everyone, ever. This isn't just about gaming, this is about life, it's about any product. No matter what you say, what you do, or what you believe, where there is support, there'll always be dissent, invariable values for both. I think we've confused the idea of compromise with the reality of decision. There are definitely parts of the Halo franchise we can compromise on. Do you like weapon skins? Yes? Well, hey, here you go, here's 20 weapon skins in the game for you to use. Do you not like weapon skins? Ah, that's fine, flip this switch and you'll never see weapon skins in the game ever again. That's compromise. But contrary to popular belief, you can't compromise on every situation. Many things have to come down to an executive action at the end of the day. Do you want an example? Should Sprint be in Halo Infinite, yes or no? Uh, don't answer in the comments, this is just a classic Halo fan argument. Ladies and gentlemen, there isn't going to be a toggle for Sprint. Sprint is hardwired into the gameplay experience, so a choice is going to have to be made on 343's part. Do we design our gameplay experience with or without it? Fun fact, they already made that decision. And this idea of executive decision is far reaching, and for each executive decision made, there will always be two sides of fans who are affected by it, those who are in support and those who are in dissent. And in Halo Infinite, there will be plenty examples of this. 343 Mark is the customization system in Infinite as akin to Halo Reach, saying that fans of Reach will be fans of how Halo Infinite tackles customization. But Ascend, everybody loved Halo whoop. What did I say about assuming everyone likes what you like? We have a whole video on that. I mean, some of you might think I'm joking, but there are people who don't like how Reach handled customization. That's real. And if they didn't like Reach, guess what they won't like? Halo Infinite. That snowballs us into the real core of our problem. The idea of a perfectly blended Halo is totally and ultimately subjective. There is no and will never be a objectively perfect Halo. That's because what people perceive as good and bad is often purely based on opinion. And this idea of subjective idolization is not unique to gaming. This is a life thing. It's all a matter of personal perception. Want an example? Imagine some M&Ms on a table. Got them in your head? Think hard, think hard, visualize them, lock that in, and comment how many M&Ms you just imagined below. Here, I'll give you a second. Great, all done? So the correct answer was five M&Ms on the table, two blue ones, and three green ones. 
You might be thinking, oh, uh, Sen, what do you mean the right answer? Well, yeah, I told you, imagine some M&Ms. My idea of some M&Ms. I thought we were on the same page. I said M&Ms, you thought M&Ms, we literally thought about the same thing, right? Right? Now apply that to Halo Infinite. If I tell you Infinite is going to be the best of each Halo game, what does that mean to you? Well, to some people, the best of each Halo game means Halo 3 with like 30 toggles for armor, weapon skins, and abilities. And to some people, it means Halo 2 Anniversary with Halo 4 armor options and med kits from Halo CE. Man, it could even mean Halo 5 with armor lock and dual wielding. The idea of the perfect blended Halo is unique per individual. There can be overlap, but since we call it by the same name, a lot of people just operate on the assumption assumption that we're all secretly on agreement on what the perfect Halo is, and that perfect Halo just so happens to be our perfect Halo. Because duh, why wouldn't it be? This feeds right back into how we form this idea that Infinite will please everyone. Many, if not most people, fail to recognize that we're not all on the same page about what would make Halo Infinite the perfect blended game, and I'm not saying that we should be. I'm saying that that's not even possible, because every fan is, at the least, entitled to their own perceptions and desires for the franchise. If everyone gets an equal vote, the outcome might reflect the option that had the most votes, but you'll still always have the people who objected to that vote. That doesn't make them any less valuable. We don't have to pretend like we don't disagree. We're all adults here on average, but it's high time we stop pretending that what we like is more valuable than what someone else likes, because that's just not true. Look, I'm not saying any of this to disparage you. If anything, I want to save you from the possibility of future disappointment. In gaming, we let hype and speculation build up this totally imaginary idea in our heads of what a game will be like, and when we find out the real game is different from our imaginary game, we get real upset. I wholeheartedly believe Halo Infinite is going to be a great game. Would include stuff I don't like? Oh, you can absolutely count on it. But I'm equally confident that like with every other Halo title, there will be stuff that I love, and that will be more than enough compensation for any dissent I have within the game. And until I get my hands on a copy on release date, I'm making extra sure to stop myself from envisioning Halo Infinite as anything else than that. So my advice, take some time today to really think about your idea of the perfectly blended Halo and see if you can recognize how what pleases you might not please someone else. That'll show you how Halo Infinite won't please everyone. That's going to do it for this video. If you want to support the channel, consider hitting up my Kofi link below, or maybe you can pick up some merch on my Teespring. Let me know what you think below in the comments after you subscribe, and until next time, I'll catch y'all later.